Hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so in today's uh, uh, talk, I'm going to talk about uh, the mobile strategy for your uh, enterprise, how to build your uh, strategy for your enterprise. Okay. So this is the agenda. Um, so we're going to see about the enterprise mobility challenge um, and uh, how to frame your enterprise strategy, how WSO2 tools can help you to uh, build your enterprise mobile strategy. And um, so in fact, you want to know what is our mobile strategy, what we are doing in WSO2. Okay, so you know about, uh, like, I don't have to tell you about uh, the smartphone penetration. So it's flooding the market. And if you want to see why uh, it's, uh, it's because of the affordability. Now the prices have gone down, or like the uh, affordability is there for um, uh, end users to buy mobile phones. And uh, the second one is the connectivity. So everywhere you go, you have connectivity, 4G to Wi-Fi, everything is there. And the third one is accessibility. You, you can use your device. So this is more powerful, uh, it's, it's equal powerful, it's, it's it's basically powerful like a computer. So it's basically, you can basically access any content. Okay, so if you look at the, um, uh, the phone market share, so they are, they are up to now, I think it has surpassed 2 billion uh, mobile devices as of now. Now if you s see the market share, Android uh, is almost like 80% uh, iOS uh, 14, and Windows 3.5, Blackberry, I think, uh, it's dying, and others a uh, very small percentage. So if you look at Android, and it's almost about 95 percentage. Okay, so you know how mobility has transformed our life. Like, so you basically use your mobile device to bank, shop, entertain, travel, and learn, make decision, and work, right? So what is the key thing which, is, which has changed? The, the, the key thing is the application. Right? So whenever you buy a phone, it has an OS, it has some built-in applications. You download application from the marketplace and you basically build enterprise application. So this is how you basically build your application. So, we, uh, so what are the applications? So I use mobile phones and uh, so to do some, some of these tasks. So what I do is basically, ob obviously I use it for calls. The second thing I use is for, to check my email. And then sometimes I use it for torch. And these are some of the tasks which I do, like from day-to-day -day life. Like this is what, uh, what activity I do on my mobile apps. Okay, so let's look at the, um, the big picture about the enterprise landscape now. Now, um, now you have a business here, and business obviously has data, everything is there. And uh, um, now you, we have already adapted mobility, sorry, uh, the uh, computer in our organization or the enterprise. Now because of adapting uh, computer here, it has reduced the gap between the business and the stakeholders. So, so these are the stakeholders in any business. Okay? So managers, owners, customers, suppliers, shareholders, and employees. Right now, what is going to happen? Like, if you adapt, like, uh, adapting uh, mobility into your enterprise. So, once you adapt mobility into your enterprise, it's further going to reduce the gap between your business and your stakeholders. Okay. So, what is going to happen now? The productivity is going to increase at the same time. Risk. So it's going to be a risky thing because you are going to basically expose all your data and the data is going to go with the mobile devices and when you travel, uh, the, the device can be stolen and your data is in big trouble. Okay? So this is the, the current situation as of now for an enterprise here. So if, if, if they are adapting, so let's see how we can uh, solve this problem and what are the tools available and how you frame your mobile strategy. From here, I'm going to take you so there's one more thing here. So the new thing which is going to come in is the IoTs, which uh, I, I hope uh, uh, enterprise have started adopting IoT here. So this is again going to further reduce the gap between the uh, the stakeholders and the business. Okay. So when you're basically um, framing a, a strategy, mobile strategy, you know you need to think about the future, not the current. Uh, challenges what you are facing. So before doing that, so we let's see what are the challenges as of now we are facing now in a mobile enterprise mobility. Okay. So if you look at these three things, I have separated that into enterprise, devices, employees. 
Now you have your enterprise here. Enterprise always use um, like uh, local data. That means inside your premise you have data, and most of the time you have some of the data in the uh, cloud. So let's let's say uh, your email thing. Email, most of the organizers, we use email, uh, Gmail, right? So basically, it's in the cloud. So your data, everything is in the cloud, okay? So, and if you look at the devices, most of the devices are iOS, Android, Blackberry, and Windows, okay? So now, let's see, um, if the enterprise is giving devices to the employees, so we call it as COP, company-owned, personally enabled, right? Now, if the employee is bringing his device to use in work, we call it as BYOD. Bring your own device. In, in fact, there are so many other jargon words as CYOD, choose your own device, so many other stuffs are coming in. But So it's all about bring your own device. It's your device and you are bringing your device to work. Okay. And uh, mobility is not only about mobile devices, it's more than that. The anything which is moving, right? it can be phones, tablets and laptops. Okay, so now I'm going to show you this one single screen uh, with the animation will tell you what are the challenges what we are facing in any enterprise. Okay, so now here you have your enterprise which has data locally and in the cloud and you have Wi-Fi in your enterprise and this is how you connect your this thing and you have your employees using BYOD and COPE devices. Okay, now let's see if you want to enable mobility, normally what you do is you develop a mobile application. Okay, so let's say you have a CRM application, you develop a CRM application. Now, can I, can I basically send this application, after developing the application, how can I basically send this application to my employees to install that on their device? The question is, you can't directly send, you can send it via email, but it, it, it will work, but sometimes it might expire. In iOS, you need to basically, uh, there should be a mechanism to distribute this application. To distribute, you definitely need a public store. Okay, so Google has Google Play, and um, sorry, Android has Google Play, uh, iOS, so all these vendors have their own stores. So you need to publish your, uh, first thing is, you need to publish your application to the store. Then. You need to tell your employees, please go and download. You send an email or some, send something like SMS, please download this application. So what they do is, they go there and download this application. And basically, the application is there. And basically, this application is connecting, is basically connect, is going to connect to the backend, to your cloud or your local um, 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 data, and it's going to download the data like this, okay? So now your data is here. Now let's see what are the challenges here we are facing as of now in an enterprise mobility, right? So the first challenge is data security. Now this phone basically belongs to the, uh, some phones belongs to the um, um, enterprise and some belongs to the employee. Now this phone is always on the move. So you are traveling, so there are this tendency where you can lose your phone and where like uh, the data can be ex uh, stolen, so that can pose some of the problems. So, uh, at a later stage, we'll figure out what that data security is all about. Then the next uh, challenge is remote device management. How can I basically manage this device, remotely manage this device? So sometimes you might need to configure Wi-Fi, so how you basically manage it, because this uh, COPE device is, belongs to the enterprise. The enterprise has full rights to manage these devices, okay? So the third challenge uh, is the enterprise node. Now, these applications belongs to the enterprise. Why should I publish my application on a public store. Everybody is going to see your application and they are going to download. Only thing is you have a username password and only if you have a username password that application will work. Now you are exposing your application to the outside world and basically, uh, uh, so this is how the ecosystem works. Like now you have to publish your application in the public store, right? So, and the fourth challenge is enterprise application development and management. How are you going to do this development? So there are so many platforms, iOS, Android, Windows, so many platforms are there. So how do I do this? This is a challenge. In fact, you can have different uh, Android developers, iOS developers, and Windows developers who basically develop this application, but you need to hire these developers. Now this is a challenge here, right? The fourth and the fifth one is resource management. How we are going to manage all the resources inside your intranet? 
the Wi-Fi and so many other printers and all these things, these are the challenges as of now the enterprise mobility is facing. Okay. Now coming back to how you basically uh, um, uh, you're going to build your mobile strategy. So it has to basically um, uh, uh, has to have a uh, business opportunity for to create new business opportunity. So if you want to adapt mobility, it has to basically, you, you need to figure out uh, whether it can improve the customer interaction and uh, whether it can basically uh, improve the existing business process. Okay? So uh, if you look at the um, internet usage as of now, the mobile data, so the thing is the, the traffic, most of the traffic is going from the mobile. So in, uh, by 2014, it has surpassed the desktop traffic, okay? So now we know that, okay? The first thing is, now you, as a company, you have your website, right? Now, if you access the same website from your mobile device, it will not look nicer, like it, it looks something like this, okay? So the first step towards mobile strategy is, like the step number one is, Enable your website on your device. So what is a, uh, what you can do to do that? So adapt responsive web. So there are tools like uh, Bootstrap 3 and so many other things, uh, like some of the latest uh, 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 web development tools have this, so you can basically adapt it. And so you have one site which works for different devices. It depends on the screen size. It will adapt itself and basically it, it's more responsive and basically it basically renders the content perfectly on your screen on that particular device, okay? So the second step. The second step is now uh, you want to basically give more um, access, uh, more uh, access to your uh, stakeholders, data to your customers, employees, vendors, and partners, okay? So the sec second step is you have to develop an application, okay? To develop this application, so you need to figure out like, so. Most of the people make this mistake. Let's say uh, I develop one application for an enterprise and say I have a mobile strategy. So that's not all about mobile strategy. So you need to think about before before developing. So, so if you want to basically come up with a, uh, a, a better or good uh, uh, enterprise mobile strategy, you need to form a team first. Now this team should basically figure out the key business drivers which drives the business. So many things are there. Then they figure out how to do that, uh, what to do, what, what area you need to focus, then how to do that, okay? The, if you're developing applications, so these are the things, key questions you should ask. So whether this mobile, adopting mobile or creating a mobile application, whether it is going to increase my revenue, shorter uh, sales cycles, improve customer experience, and make your employees more productive. This is one keyword which is very important. Like, so, uh, so I'll tell you what, uh, how we basically formed our mobile strategy. So these are the key things which you need to identify before you start uh, building an application. Okay? Then you will come up with the different ideas, and you will have so many applications. The next thing you should do is like prioritize and pick up like you have to have basically uh, pick up or like which one is the first one to develop and that's how you go about, okay? So first thing in developing an application is bring all the APIs. Now you have CR, CRM system, you have HR system, you have so many other systems. Now first thing is you need to bring all these APIs to one place. How WSOTO can help you? So it's basically the API manager. So um, Isabel was talking about how these API things uh, work, and I'm not going to talk about more about the API. So basically, bring all these APIs so that you can manage, monitor, and make, make basically um, uh, you have analytics on which uh, device this application is being accessed and what time, and those things can be basically more, uh, um, uh, can be monitored, right? So then basically. Uh, uh, we have something called like uh, when you publish, when you basically publish your APIs, so you, you will be basically allowed to download an SDK. So if you are developing any application, so you can use this SDK to develop your mobile application. So what is going to do happen? Like, so you can seamlessly use this uh, uh, SDK to develop uh, 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 your application without uh, worrying about the security and other aspects of how these APIs is going to work. So this SDK will handle all these tasks of hiding the, 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 the complex task which is going to handle inside this SDK, 
okay so which will be so we are like we, which is going to come very soon so maybe next month uh, or maybe uh, uh, end of this quarter we'll be basically we are working on this okay now this is a very very important question so whenever you go and um, ask your um, uh, IT managers how you are going to develop applications so that's a biggest problem here so let's see this is a very important thing choose your mobile development methodology how to basically develop application now there are five different ways to develop mobile application so what is the first one responsive that means you don't develop any application what you do is you make your application uh, responsive so that basically uh, so I was talking about the responsive thing so that it adapts to your screen and basically that's how it works okay the second one is hybrid web what that is the hybrid web means so hybrid web is nothing but you develop any application you write your logic in HTML and JavaScript and you're not writing in a native uh, uh, code so you have a browser sort of thing a web view which is embedded inside your application which renders your logic everything in a um, in the inside the HTML page itself only thing is it looks like an application you can basically publish this application you download it but it it basically looks like a web page so when you select this one it will basically highlight everything okay so you must have heard about Cordova phone gap so this is so these are the two technologies available to do this hybrid um, uh, web so third one is mobile web what is this mobile web so if you look at uh, Safari um, uh, mobile Safari which comes to iOS they have special extensions where you can develop applications so that it looks like a native uh, application on a Safari phone itself it doesn't have an address bar it basically looks like a so only thing is you basically need to go to a browser type that URL then after that it looks like a native application but still it is a web application right so it's running inside the web okay the th fourth one is hybrid native um, hybrid native what is this hybrid native means like hybrid native so so the thing is you develop your application in C sharp okay and uh, uh, basically you can convert that to Android code native code and iOS native code so you have uh, tools like titanium and which basically you can uh, write your application in um, uh, C sharp and uh, there's one more tool accelerator so which uses JavaScript you write your code in JavaScript but it compiles to native code okay so th so the last one is native apps of course you have to hire a Android developer and it has to work uh, like you have to develop that code in uh, Android the other one is iOS you have to develop your code in uh, C objective C or um, uh, Swift the new language okay now um, as an organization or an enterprise now how do you decide what is the best uh, methodology for me to develop a mobile application so this is the biggest problem so whenever I ask uh, like uh, whenever the customers comes in and they ask like uh, so shall we go with the native uh, so most of the time they go with hybrid web yeah, why not like we can easily develop and it will run on Android and iOS and Windows it's very simple something like that so there are key factors or key indicators which helps you to identify which is the methodology which your organization is going to use so what are the key factors okay single code base let's say you want to have one single code base and you want to maintain only one single code base and uh, basically you want to develop this application if your application is a basic application you develop so these are the, so if you identify that one definitely you'll go with uh, like a hybrid web so sometimes you might uh, think about distribution I don't want my application to be published on a public store right so I want my application to basically um, um, uh, on a web thing itself so you go with a responsive web. likewise developers availability so you have Android developers and you you in your organization you have only web developers so when you have web developers go with um, uh, hybrid web uh, or what any other stuff like uh, thing and if you want to go with really with a speed and user experience and those stuff definitely you have to go with a native apps approach okay so th the third step is publishing the apl application so um, so this is your application why do you want to uh, publish your application on the store so what you can do is uh, you can basically use our uh, tool which is the app manager which basically enables you to uh, publish application and it supports multiple platforms so you can publish iOS, Android, and uh, even web applications. Everything is supported, multi-tenancy, SSO. Everything is there. So it's basically a thing. Only thing is um, uh, 
uh, when you download, basically you need to enable uh, like uh, untrusted something like that. So these are the <laughs> uh, uh, drawbacks which is there. So but only thing is uh, you have one single store and it's your store which is basically available and which you can download. Okay. So next for uh, next step, uh, next one is like how do you allow BYD in Cope? Okay. So thing is, I'm more concerned about my data. I want my data to be secure, uh, more secure, and it has also uh, maintain the privacy of the end user. So I don't want uh, to track the uh, employees' uh, data and uh, take their photos and something like that. So privacy, and I want uh, my Cope device to be managed. Okay. So if you want all these things. You need to go, so before, before we go into this one, you need to think about what is data security. Now I'm talking about security. What is data security? Where's the data? What is the data basically? So let's say in your mobile phone, you're accessing an email. The email might be having some attachments which is uh, like uh, sensitive, which might contain some sensitive information. Okay, at the same time, you, you might be uh, accessing some HTML pages, which are some cookies, and it's more sensitive website. Okay, so and also you have contacts, calendar, notes, application, which has databases. So all these data are going to sit on your mobile phone, right? Now, wh why this data is sensitive? Because it might basically have an adverse effect on your uh, enterprise if it is, uh, it is exposed outside, right? It can have salary details or it might have a uh, high impact if it goes to the wrong person. So how it can be comprised? Device can be stolen or it can be data can be leaked or malicious apps stealing the data. So who can comprise? Employees within the organization and employees like uh, there are like uh, competitors who can basically um, uh, steal the phone and steal the data, okay? Okay, so there are, there are two ways to solve the data security challenge. The first way is device-based, and the other one is application-based, okay? So let's figure out what this uh, device-based. Now, in your device, you have an application, you have a data here, right? Now, if you basically have a, a what do you call a fence around this thing, so we call this method as mobile device management. So your data is inside your application, and everything is inside your application, but you have basically uh, protecting the device on the whole, right? So Thing is, how do you do that is, you enforce password policy, okay, and encrypt de device data. So these are the two options if you basically want to, in, uh, basically, um, uh, data security part of it, if you are going with the mobile device management, and even, uh, like, um, um, iOS have uh, their new new things which uh, they have come up with the profiles where you can basically have uh, containerization other stuff like that and also with this approach you can basically have uh, remote device manager monitor device configure device control device update install OS uh, install and uninstall OS okay so this is how you it happens so you apply a policy then it be basically uh, it asks you for a password and you have to give a password policy based on the password policy it works okay so the problem with this approach is no data, no, uh, so no granular control of the sensitivity. Your data is inside your application, but you are basically uh, controlling your device, okay? The other one is privacy issue. So the employees might think, okay, so uh, this, uh, he might basically, the, the employer might basically steal his personal data, or basically he can see all this personal data and the location, right? Okay, the other one is apps in the data, apps in the device. So there are three different types of application in your mobile device. One is the vendor apps, the apps from the public store, and the ent enterprise apps. Okay, now data security. How do you basically, the, the, uh, how do you basically um, uh, do a data security from this point of view? So separate apps and data. Now how do you basically, um, so you have your application inside your, inside your mobile device, and you want to separate this application out along with the data. So how do you do that? So this is something, a uh, technique called containerization. So where basically, um, you basically separate the application and the data in a separate area inside your mobile device, okay? So this is called mobile virtualization, okay? So the other one is, uh, you develop your mobile application and it's an HTML thing where you basically go through the browser and that's how your application always in the backend, okay? So only thing is uh, uh, when it is cached and uh, other, other, th other things are like that. And the other technique is desktop virtualization. You would have used like um, remotely logged into another machine. So likewise in mobile also, you can basically log in using a, a remote desktop and basically log into the dis Only thing is the screen size is the problem. If, you, if it is a tablet, then no issue. Okay, the other approach is the, uh, the other one is like the uh, application side of it. Now you have your data and you have your application here. If you put a fence around this application and 
you have a control, something like from the back end, you can basically have control of your mobile application by locking the application, deleting the data, all these things are under the control of the enterprise. Now we call this technique as mobile app management. So the data is protected, application can be controlled remotely. Okay, so MAM gets a step closer to managing what you care about. Okay, so the techniques for using MAM is, you have a, before you develop your application, we give you an SDK. So you use that SDK to you develop your application. So all the data which you are going to basically store in the uh, application is going to be encrypted and only decrypted at the time of, like uh, when you are using it. Okay, so these are the core features. So to, to basically uh, have data security, remote uh, um, device management, and privacy sort of thing, so you can use WSOT EMM tool, which can basically uh, solve this problem what you are facing in the enterprise, okay? So what is WSOT uh, internal mobile strategy? So basically, uh, what we did was like, um, we want to improve the productivity. So currently, we don't have Wi-Fi access to mobile devices. So we have blocked it. We are based on WPA2 Enterprise. Okay. So what we have done is like um, to allow um, secure Wi-Fi connection to all mobile devices. Okay. So and the next thing is every team ha has come up with their own ideas and they have developed. Uh, they want to develop application, but the problem is you don't have a centralized uh, mechanism to develop all these applications. Right? So this was a challenge. So then we figured out how to do this. So we initially formed a team and we framed a policy and we came up with these things. Allow Android, iOS, Windows device, block any router device or jbroken device, allow maximum of five devices per user, allow BYD cope device with the different policies, no control of the privacy and viewers. So we came up with three profiles. One is you can basically uh, um, enroll your device to EMM and once you enroll, you, you are given Wi-Fi access. Okay, and if you are like, uh, so which has only Wi-Fi profile, that means you, it will not control any data, it will basically allow you, so at the time of installing your application, you can see with the permissions, only Wi-Fi and other stuff, okay? So let's see how this works. Uh, this is uh, uh, currently implemented, so we'll be launching this uh, in a couple of weeks. So this is how it works. Now you have a mobile device, you don't have internet connection, and uh, then uh, when you go to Google, so it, it's not working, so let's go through this video. So here, you select your Wi-Fi network, so you enable Wi-Fi, and you select a WSO to mobile, right? So what happens is everything is automatic now, right? So then you select your Wi-Fi, and then automatically, the, uh, because you have selected, it goes to the EMM. So even though you have typed google.com, it goes to the EMM, then it goes to this page. There you have three profiles. My device, only Wi-Fi, so you basically click that one, and it downloads the agent. So everything is automatic. So now it asks for, so it asks for permission. Only Wi-Fi access is uh, uh, enabled. Now it is, uh, the good thing about this uh, application is, now you know about uh, captive portal, right? So you log in, basically you use your credential, then after that it expires after some time. And then again when you log in, you have to uh, enter your credential. But here in this one, only at the time of registration you have to put your username and password. Then after that, so next uh, it expires uh, 24 hours. Then after that when you come, automatically it will basically, uh, like when you basically type your whatever the URL, Right, what happens is it invokes the application at the background and it enables, it checks the, uh, the, the session and basically it connects with the backend and then basically give, allows you access to the internet. So this is how it works. So with one click of a button after you type your username and password, so basically it enables internet access. So uh, we need to have a separate session on how this thing works, like how internally how we have implemented it. So if you want to know more about this one, maybe after the talk you can basically discuss. Okay, so that's it. So your Wi-Fi is enabled and you can go and in use your internet. That's it, only one time username and password, that's it. Then after that, you come uh, like next day, right? If you are in a captive portal, it is uh, definitely going to ask your username and password here. It basically what happens is when you type your URL automatically since uh, the, the, the WLAN basically redirects uh, to the application which is sitting on your mobile device and that will be running in the background and it will enable internet access to you, your, your user credential basically and then it allows you internet, okay, internet access, okay. So the next one is the mobile 
uh, application development of it. So this is basically a life cycle, mobile application life cycle development platform. So what, what we are currently doing is we are basically, if you, if you are in HR and you want to develop a mobile application, so you go there and you basically create a project. So once you create a project, a repository is created. So basically, you don't have to create a, re a repository. You basically upload uh, the new, uh, whatever the uh, uh, source code into your, whatever the, uh, uh, the project. Then what happens is, and you basically subscribe to whatever the APIs. Uh, so let's say HR, then you basically go there and subscribe to all the uh, APIs related to HR. And then you invite the developer. Then basically you can use whatever the ID you have. So it can be uh, Eclipse or, so this is basically an Android development here. So then once your application is developed uh, develop and you basically uh, update or basically commit your code. So once the code is committed, then basically um, uh, it is built and basically it basically publishes your app to the testing store. Okay, then the QA team will basically uh, test this application and basically what happens is, uh, once the test is been done and it's been approved by the project manager, it goes to the production store. And then what happens is, through the MDM, it basically installs the application to the respective uh, uh, mobile devices based on uh, the, the roles or based on uh, uh, how you are going to create your application or what application you are de uh, developing. Then after that, you use your MAM to basically uh, control the application and have the analytics side of application. Okay, so we use um, the these are the tools which we are using basically. So we have already developed this uh, um, uh, the API side of it and the stores and all these things. Only thing is we have to do the integration and uh, soon we will be uh, having this implemented. So um, uh, all the teams will be basically using this. Uh, uh, this is a connected uh, development uh, tool which you develop mobile applications. So you, you can see maybe in Nextcon uh, you will see more applications inside WSO2. Okay, so we have enough technology. We need to know how to use it. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah.